wait till the whole body of work is in place, and then you make decisions based on that. So there wasn't a, a point in time until after the season when you review everything, you see who we've got coming back, uh, you look at our scheduling for next year, and you look at all those things and felt like, you know, we're, if we can continue to do what we did, build on this year, and then after, after this coming year, build on that and keep building on that, I think that's where we all want to be in, in a four-year period. Yeah, you said you're not you're given this extension, but it doesn't mean that you're satisfied with where the program is right now. Where would you? Where do you want to see it get to? Well, I think I think our program should be just like any other program that we sponsor. Uh, we want to be competitive in the SEC, and usually, if you're competitive in the SEC, you're competitive on a national level. So I think we all, uh, every sport we have, with 15 different head coaches. I mean, our our goal is to all be competing in the NCAA championship for whatever sport that may be. So. If you look at our goals uh, as a department, that's one of our goals, is every team competes in their national championship. So uh, basketball should be treated just as other sports as far as that expectation. You mentioned in the release here you talked with Coach Fox about discussing the recruiting plan. Yeah. I guess if there's been a real criticism of Coach Fox has been the recruitment and the fact he's not consistently able to bring in the top players in the state of Georgia. Right. How does he and I guess you plan on addressing that aspect of it? Well, that's the responsibility of the head coach. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't get involved in uh, staffing decisions, personnel decisions, other than the head coach. Uh, but I think that 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 if from that standpoint, I mean, I mean, coach knows what what needs to be done. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we we need to recruit at a very high level because uh, uh, you have to continuous continually kind of restock every year, uh, and so that is. Uh, that's a very important point, and we did talk about that, uh, as well as other things. But needless to say, sometimes that is the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we realize what needs to be done, but, you know, our staff stands ready to assist in any way. Maybe this is a question that would be better to ask the hand. Has he been frustrated with recruitment, the, the lack of not being able to get the, the quote guys yeah. that they're targeting? He'd have to ask Mark that question, but I'm sure there's some misses that, uh, that disappoints him throughout. I mean, you work so hard on certain individuals throughout the year and mm -hmm. things don't turn out your way, sure, it gets frustrating. It's not, it's not due to a lack of trying, I can assure you that. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that's probably a question better asked by Mark because, you know, we, you know we, we, we just have to provide the resources, we have to provide all the tools necessary to, to make it all happen. And then uh, it's up to the coach and we're able to help with official visits, uh, setting things up, transportation, all those type things as far as providing the financial resources to make it happen. So uh, I, I couldn't answer that. Mark would be able to answer that better than I. How do you feel going to your answer to Coach Lamar? Well, I think there's a, a, a time for a young man uh, uh, wants to maybe feel comfortable. Uh, it kind of puts to uh, rest any questions when you're talking to a high school uh, prospect of, well, how long are you going to be around? Uh, so I think this kind of takes that off the table. From that standpoint, which was uh, which is important to anyone entering to that it, the depth of their initial contract. If they have a season similar to what they had this year, would that be having a tough? Oh, I see. You know, that's I'm not going. I'm not going to uh, comment on any uh, could have, could have, should have. You know, my, my stance on that. But yeah. Time will tell. Is, is this as much a re, um, a reflection of what I mean? It's in there. What, what they've got coming back is it as much a reflection of that versus what? has happened the first five years? Well, I think it's the culmination of, of five years of work. Uh, Mark's first contract was a six-year deal, right? Well, we're entering that point in time, and the institution felt like that was the uh, right amount of time to try to turn things around. I mean, that's why Mark Fox was, Fox was brought to the University of Georgia. So, yeah, I would, I would think anybody would hope when Mark uh, signed his first contract that at the end of that six-year period that, you know, we're competing at a high level. You know, we competed at a, 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 a high level this year, not as high as we wanted to, but still, you know, the, the record shows uh, uh, the performance of the team this year. You know, now we need to start stacking success upon success. So I think every, I mean, I'm sure we'll be picked high. I'm sure our fans are thinking that, uh, you know, we're going to be, you know, about where we are next year, maybe improving. I think everybody looks at that. I'm sure if you ask all the players, yeah, they expect to get better. They expect to work hard during the off season and get ready for next season and, and play a really, really tough schedule. You, you guys have agreed uh, to a two-year extension. Yep. What else have you agreed to with this 
it's just, bait. I mean, we've just talked in broad terms of, uh, of uh, the financial piece of it, but, you know, that's, that's not the story for today. Like I said, we'll, we haven't really focused on that part uh, a good deal. We've got some clearances that we need to uh, clear internally, but we thought it was important to go ahead and, and with the recruiting, uh, everything that's in place, that we go ahead and do it at this time. But are you and Mark on the same page? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Okay. Yes, we are. Do you anticipate that the contract will be a brand new contract, kind of like what Coach Rick had a few years ago, or is this just an addendum? I think it'll be an addendum. Okay. Yeah. Will the contract, will the buyout terms be changing? I'm not talking about any of the financials. You know, we've, we've got some other other uh, other hurdles to clear. Not hurdles internally with me and Mark, but we've just got to go through the process uh, with, with members of our board, things of that nature. There's uh, uh, two teams from the SEC playing in the Final Four. You played both of them and they didn't go well. Is that an indication of the gap that still needs to be made up, you know, on the, on the teams that are winning the... Well, you've got to look to where we game. played them. I mean, we're both on the road. Uh, you know, next year we'll have every really power team in the conference come into the Coliseum. So, uh, it's hard to judge. I mean, Kentucky doesn't lose many games at home, and Tennessee, as we know, doesn't lose many games at Thompson Bowling Arena. So, I think it's unfair to judge it on that one game. Uh, we did play Kentucky and Atlanta, obviously, and you know it was a, a lot better than it was in Lexington. But uh, I think you just can't you can't make a judgment on that until you get them in our place. And you know we know how well we play at home, and it obviously made a huge difference in some games this year. We were able to win at home. You know we just didn't have an opportunity to play them. You know Florida, Kentucky, or Tennessee at home this year. When did you uh, meet with Mark to discuss all this stuff? Oh gosh, I mean we were just off and on. We met, uh, uh, what's the day? Wednesday. Wednesday. We probably met uh, uh, last week at some point in time. We talked on and off probably four or five days, but there's not been one big meeting. There's yeah. been meetings upon meetings and follow-up and uh, discussions going forward. So, you know, we just, we talked uh, numerous times. Was there any real interest from uh, other schools in the market? I've been not made aware of any interest. You were, I'm trying to remember the timeline exactly, but um, were you with Florida when you got there when Coach Kruger, was he already there? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. How long had he been there? I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. But he, I mean, the perception is that Billy came in and things took off, but Coach Kruger was there and took him to the Final Four. And, I mean, Florida was a lot. It didn't have a great history of basketball for a while until Coach Kruger, I think, took Gonzo. Do you think something at Georgia, is, is Georgia kind of working? Through, are there any comparisons there? Or, well, I think everybody thinks it's so easy to follow another model. Uh, I'm sure there are other ADs in this conference, other ADs in other conferences that feel like, boy, we'd like to be able to do what Florida has done. Uh, there's one constant in that, and that's Billy Donovan, uh, a Hall of Fame coach at age 48. You know, those kind of people are, are rare in this profession that can compete at that high of a level. So, uh, I mean, the, there's, there's risk in every hire. There was risk in, in talking to Billy Donovan, who had been, uh, you know, at, at, uh, in Huntington for what a couple of years at Marshall. There was risk there. Uh, it's played out pretty well, but I think uh, people people do think that it's it's easy to do because others do it, uh, but it's very difficult to do because of the type of person uh, and what Billy's been able to do there. Florida doesn't, just doesn't happen everywhere. You can look throughout college football. Uh, college basketball at certain areas and it just uh, you know it's very difficult to do and when you make that right decision uh, it, it really pays big dividends down the road. You might have answered this earlier so I'm curious about that. Uh, was there a point during the season where, where you decided that, that you wanted Mark back? Yeah after the uh, after the NIT tournament. You, know, I mean, you wait till the end of the year that's what you do. I mean, you, I mean you obviously keep up with it during the year. You look at certain things, but that's why you don't jump to decisions and make decisions halfway through the season. And I certainly wasn't going to say anything during the season to mess things up. I think you guys were asking all these questions during the year. You know, it's better for the AD just to be quiet. Don't mess it up. And I didn't want to insert myself into a, an area that, that needed no comment at that time. Uh, uh, things were rolling in a, fi in, a, in a fine fashion, and I just didn't want to get in the way. Did you ever talk to Mark and say, you know, don't, don't worry, you know? Whatever. No, I think during the season, I mean, we approach the season just like any other season as far as, you know, you're around the program, uh, you're at the home games, uh, 
around the tournament. You, you're, you're around the program as much as you can be, but you don't want to, to start acting differently all of a sudden. Just because you may be struggling at the, in the beginning or having success at the end, and you try to be consistent with all your coaches, and at the end of the year you deal with what you need to deal with. That was in the statement it says the expectation for next year will be very high. Yeah. Does that mean an NCAA tournament? Well, I think if you ask anybody that follows our program, if you ask our team, our coaches, absolutely, that's our ultimate goal is to get in the show. And, uh, I mean, if that wasn't our objective, then why are we even playing the game? So, yeah, if you ask all our players, if you ask our coaches, absolutely ask our fans. Absolutely. I mean, is that, the, is that the final determining factor? I mean, there are a lot of things that come into play. So you never go to a coach and say, if this, if this has to happen or, it, or else you're gone. You can't have that conversation. There's so many factors that, that go into certain decisions, and I think it, it pretty much handcuffs a coach, too. They're, it's just very difficult to work in an environment if you put those type of uh, – demands before you even start the season. How, how much input did you get from uh, Terry Roy at all this? Oh, he and I stay in touch often. So he and I discuss things back and forth. So I make sure that my boss is fully informed. On the attendance, um, remember, just piggyback on what yeah. we talked about. What are, what, what, what's your thinking there? Oh, we've got a, uh, uh, a group of staff that are working on some options internally on how we can capture that enthusiasm that was in Stegman for those two NIT games. Is there some way that we can develop you know, that general uh, admission atmosphere? Uh, I'm not sure where that leads us, but uh, we're certainly going to look at it and see if there's some options that we can do to kind of mirror that enthusiasm uh, for this coming season because, as everybody noticed, uh, it made a huge difference. I mean, we're down 26 points to Louisiana Tech. You know, the crowd, if they weren't, if, if that crowd wasn't in fully engaged in that game and wanted Georgia to win, they would have left at halftime. But I think you saw a group in there that stuck behind our team, motivated them. What we did, cut it to four. You know, so that made a huge difference. And those two crowds, uh, I'd probably say Ole Miss was, was pretty comparable to that. But uh, everybody knows, everybody that was there saw what that type of atmosphere did to uh, – encourage our players and get everybody really excited about the game. Might just help them. Seems like this really is going to keep them up there. Hmm. Might it help Austin this having Yeah, it, it helps, no question. I mean, it helps your season ticket. I mean, we've got Missouri coming in. We've got Arkansas. So I think every team that was in the upper half of the league is coming in next year. So, And we don't return some of those games. I'd have to look at the schedule, but we know they're yeah. coming to Stegman next year. So it should, be a, it should be a great home schedule with Seton Hall, Colorado, those conference games, so uh, you know, Tech on the road. Uh, we're still Frank's working on Frank and Mark are working on some other games that we can do. But yeah, I mean, we've got the type of team that needs to play a, a, a really tough schedule because of our experience coming back. 